What is going on, everybody? Bobby Fire, man, Eric Sheets Haber, who's just back from Vegas from and some other stuff he had to take care of. Sheets, it's good to have you back, man. I cannot seem to get these slates right these days. I just can't quite seem to hit. So we're happy to have you back. Um, tell us, you know, how was how was Vegas, and uh, you know, then we'll get into the slate. Vegas was good. I registered for my survivor pool, another pool. Um, got to play some really good golf. Brought my wife, and we went with one other couple. That was was really really good. Came back, had some personal issues I had to deal with yesterday. Um, I'm going to the U.S. Open on Thursday, which is good. Oh, that's good. cool. And to prepare for that, I mean, they're, these slates, by the way, they're getting like 50000 for first during the Open. So keep on top of the, uh, of the really? projections and all that. Yeah. And I'm watching on ESPN at the risk of being canceled. I'm watching ESPN Plus on the other side. Two incredibly hot blondes playing in, in a match right now. <laughs> uh I don't know if you're allowed to say that, but it's the truth. <laughs> I, I don't it's know what's like, wrong with that. Yeah, Canopy against Martin Martin Kova. Um, yeah, this they're, they're both very, very, very big, very and very, uh, very pleasant to look at. Yeah. But, um. Anyway, um, I uh, last night I I actually did one really good thing yesterday before I had to dispense for the day. I basically cleaned up the the LOL slate yesterday. Uh. I won like both. I won the single, won the single entry, and I chopped three ways. The the big one, the big one's only you know like three k or twenty five hundred, but still beats losing. Yeah, that's that's and awful. and uh, and uh, made up for the fact that I played forty percent Molina because I didn't pay attention to the lineups last night. Um, but I'm ready to get after it today, and uh, some really really good pitching options to to weed through. And uh, looking forward to 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 Bobby either today or tomorrow. Uh, getting this, getting at least five figures and yeah. hopefully six, and I'll be more than happy to sign on for a second. It's been, it's, I appreciate that, man. I appreciate that. It's been a rough one, and usually August is a really good month for me. So, hopefully, we can turn it around with a few couple days left here for me. But in the meantime, we have had some people who've had some luck. We had a dude. We saw that dude. We saw. Oh, here's the other thing that might happen, right? So, I want to shout out to whoever that was that took down that golf showdown thing over the weekend. Um. And for those of you that followed, by the way, my 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 picks and my 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 quick video, or whatever, and my cores for the golf this past weekend, you had no choice but to but to clean up. I mean, and I was really concentrated, and I actually uh, I, I I cashed for a whole bunch. I, I won like 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 eight thousand or something in the in the. I, I went. I did. Uh, I did a full one fifty, and I was really really concentrated. And everybody was cashing. There's a couple of times where I was in first. For a couple of a couple of a uh, couple of minutes, and uh, did really really well. I hope everybody was on top of that. Um, a couple of people have been asking about the live tournament stuff. I don't know if there's going to be enough info for me to do any sheets for that. Um, I know they're going to be putting out some decent contests. Um, I guess I would just advise you to use your instincts. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, and just play the guys that you like and you've heard of, I suppose. Um, but maybe we'll maybe we'll do a video on that. We'll see. We'll see how big the contest is and whatever during this PGA kind of respite. Mm -hmm. Sounds good to me. Um, all right. Well, let's let's get into it because this is the this is the I don't know if you guys remember this for, for those of you who played DFS as long as I have. There used to be one three thirty three a a month, basically. I don't know. Occasionally they would do it every two weeks in baseball, but it was like one one a month. It was a hundred k for first first place. And my first big wins in DFS when I decided to start, I was like, hey, I'm going to start just doing this because I was making more money than my job. And then I went on a like a a, a big downswing. My bankroll was a little bit threatened. And then I won the two, but they ended up doing two in a week. And I won the three, the three thirty three for hundred K for first place uh, with one entry. And then with three entries the next time, the next week. So hopefully this is the, this is the sign the three thirty three today is, is going to be mine. And I'm hope I'm hoping for it anyway. But so that's, tonight, that's the three, there's a three thirty three tonight. There's a, there's a three thirty three tonight is the one. And who, and who, who are we battling with? What's the mass amount of entries people could put in? I think it's like 30, but. Oh, I that's it. <laughs> I think, yeah, that's de It feels dealable. Yeah. 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 Um, I think it's, I think it's, uh, oh, it's 45, but okay. Still, I can handle it. I can handle it with, with three or four. Um, we're going to just have to listen, listen, here. And here's, here's my thoughts, right? And I don't want to, I'm only going to call this guy out because of the way the, the story flows. Cause I've always told it the same way. Sure. So back when in, in poker, when there was this whole multi-accounting stuff, you know, where, where people would be buying like multiple entries into the same tournament, which you can't do in poker, by the way. You can do it in DFS, you can't do it in poker. Okay? Right. Um, and people use different accounts and stuff like that. And some of the better players were doing this. And 
they were back then, you know, pe people were asking me, well, what are your thoughts on this? I go, well, how, how are you competing? Or aren't you pissed off or whatever? And I always said, and I'm going to use the name just because the way I tell the story, I don't care how many Z Justins I'm playing against if I'm, if my <laughs> coin flips are going to hold. You know what I mean? So so as long as I don't care, I, you give me 37 guys I'm playing against. I really don't care. I'll beat every one of them. And that was that was kind of my thought. Now, it's kind of hard in DFS because of the math, the way it all works, when right. they surround you with diversity. But um, but as opposed to like multi-county poker, I'm only playing like the same guy in the same, you know what I mean? Here you have to like surround yourself with with with, with negatively correlated lineups that if one doesn't do well, the other one's naturally going to. That's kind of hard. But uh, I'm ready, man. Give me, uh, you know, give me your 150. Give me your 30 entries. I'll, I'll, I'll try to come up with something good. Hey, we've certainly done it plenty of times yeah. before. No reason why we can't do it tonight. Let's do it. Sure. Have. Um. All right. So let's jump over to it. Uh, we'll talk about Oakland and Washington to start. Um. And and Cheech, you know, I, I just want to mention before we start, you, you mentioned about the leaks in your thing. So I I went back through some of my things. I've been taking some pretty big chances, if, and I've actually been five man stacking a little bit more because I think I feel like that's right for this time of year, especially. I really go in and out of wavering my four two one ones and stuff, and I'm just getting I'm getting the wrong things, and sometimes I'm avoiding chalk. Like last night, I ended up trying to avoid the, the St. Louis game for multiple, mostly because it was the, ch the chalk. Then there was also weather concerns, which gave you a little bit of a maybe a fifteen percent chance of the game not playing or so because it took two hours to restart basically. Um, so I, I I think that that if there's anything I've been fading too much chalk, but in baseball that's what you should be doing. You know what I mean? The chalk I I would like to I would like to read something to you, and you're gonna I don't know if you've had the if you've had the the patience to look through it, but I want to um where is this in crap uh, questions on for those of you that are not in our Discord. I mean, first of all, you should be there, um, but. In our Saber Sim channel, not the private one, but there's one that says Saber Sim questions. Okay, you're gonna really like this. So I'm gonna pull this up here actually. Okay. So the Saber Sim guys put up uh, put an update on um to their systems and it addressed something that I had been talking about for two years with them, that sometimes their correlation sliders just overwhelmingly suggest five man stacks, regardless of what players you have, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And you end up, uh, you know, with, with a, a number nine here for, for, for some team, instead of like a one off Mike Trout, just because it makes the, the, um, the lineup look a little prettier. They just did a huge revamp of the entire correlation model and the entire slider system. And they do a whole video on, I can't wait to watch the whole thing, but, but I want, I want to show this is that, one of their one of their um, conclusions based on all of their work that led them to this whole thing was you look at number one, it says they think the field actually undervalues the three threes in general. And some of the research shows that they're competitive and, and, and whatever. So it's basically confirming their analysis, stuff that you've been talking about for like well over a year, you know, mm -hmm. that the that, that it's not just about putting the five man stack together, you know, Um and I'm curious to know how their how their models and how their lineup builds are going to change. I wonder if they're going to get out more three, you know, offbeat type stacks. But it's kind of cool to me that your instincts, while weren't based on analytics, were are just pretty much in line with with these guys who are just basically pure analytics. Yeah, no, no, that, 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 I love it when that, that when that syncs up. It always feels good. Either way, um, yeah. um, no, really interesting stuff. I need to check that out too. Um, all right. Well, yeah. So with that said, let's, let's, let's get into it. Uh, um, and by the way, I just want to say like the, the, the weird one-off guys that everybody keeps asking me about and, and things that make no sense logically to me, play those guys. Every time I say no, they hit a home run. It doesn't matter if they're having a home run. In three. So one night it was Urshela as a one-off. Urshela had gone, I think it was 600 and something at bats with, I mean, it wasn't Urshela. It was a uh, Kiner Falefa, uh, 600 and something at bats without a home run. And then he hits a home run that night and hits two doubles. And it's just like last night it was Ren Renjifo um, when you had, you know, guys surrounding him. Although I don't think he outscored Alex Baum, who was right there. Anyway, it's just, it's just, I can't seem to, to, to get it right. And it's really just, I think that it's randomness a lot, but those, there's just some weird one-offs that, that are hitting that people, anyway, whatever, just don't, don't entirely trust me on the one-off thing. Uh, I've been ice cold lately. I, I will, I will tell you to trust me in the next couple of weeks when I'm back on, back on track, but with all that said, uh, we can get into it with the first game here with Oakland and Washington. Um, 
on this slate, I don't think I'm playing either of these pitchers. Uh, I think that you could always make like a case against either of these teams. So I don't think it's horrible. I mean, we just saw Cole, Cole Irvin put up 35 fantasy points. There's some talent there. I don't think it's the worst play in the world. I think, I mean, he's one of those guys where if I'm playing 150, he probably makes some lineups, but he certainly can't be a priority on this slate. And in the same token, I think that all of these hitters that you have uh, this this great value on, you could just filter in if you want to. I don't mind Fetty pitches the contact, so maybe you could take a shot on a 2K Chad Pinder if you wanted to, or a Moshin or uh, Cal Stevenson, depending on where he's hitting in the lineup. I just don't see any priority things to do here. It's just sort of pieces of this game. I really kind of like Oakland here. Um, Ooh, and, and, and the reason love the that, prices. She just a sucker for the minimum price. I am. And, and, and part of it is, is something that you said and something I read about, I heard about on another, on another site was that on the one hand, Fetty usually doesn't, doesn't walk that many people yet. He has been recently. Okay. Right. Um, so for me, I mean, if, if I think that's like kind of a perfect scenario to get really good pitches to hit, you know, like, like if there's a guy who was like, what the hell am I doing? Like walking these people, you know, and I'm not supposed to, I think he's going to even like make more sure to not walk people, which means it's going to be some more freaking meatballs. Uh, um, mm-hmm. so, 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 um, I, I do kind of, I do like Oakland here and I like the, you know, Seth Brown, Chad Pinder, Jonah Brown. I like this Cal Stevenson dude. Um, Kemp is always good. He's always been good to me. And that the the guy that's the chandelier guy, whatever his name, whatever how whatever his his uh, sh- was it Shan not chandelier Sh- Sh- Shane Langeliers or whatever. Sh- Shane Langley, um, yeah, yeah. Sh- his chandelier could be a bright spot in this whole Oakland lineup. Sorry, that was bad. Um, <laughs> but so 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 I so I do so I do like the Oakland side. Um, it's for value. Um, and I'm not going to get to any of the pitching there. Yeah, and just to double down on on, on Oakland making sense, I, I even even maybe not a five man because it's hard to win a whole slate with it. But although yeah. you could do the five man cheap and your three man could score as many points and you could still win. I mean that's totally yeah. possible. But you have a huge amount of stolen base upside. Also, Fetty's one of the worst at holding runners on. So if you see like a Jonah Bride at the top of the lineup, a Nick Allen if he somehow ends up at the top of the lineup because sometimes they bat these guys first, sometimes they bat them ninth. Um, Tony Kemp, of course. Uh, all of these guys have stolen base upside. So you, you, you get one of them with, with, uh, with the first baseman and Seth Brown, who's got some power and maybe throw in a pinder and you've got a beautiful little free man. So I'm actually on, on board with getting a little pieces of Oakland. I, I had it just as pieces, but I could see a little mini stack, uh, definitely making some sense. So I think one of the themes as we go to the Chicago, Toronto, I think one of the themes of, of today with the pitching is there's a lot of, there's a, you know, a whole bunch of good pitchers, uh, in good matchups. And I think there's kind of a, not dichotomy, but at least some sort of blend between the pitchers who are just basically a lock to win and pitchers that have, you know, have that good DFS upside. And right. the question is of how much to sacrifice from one to, to, to grab the other. Um, and I mean, I'm, I'm sure you have the same you know, handful of guys I have, like six, seven guys who could all, you could all kind of make cases for. And, and Gaussman to me is certainly one of them. You know, I, I have, if you just rate it on, on medians and, and all that stuff, and it's function of value i literally have like almost like a six-way tie like for first and yeah. you just have to figure out like which of the guys that you have like what what you're using them for you know do, do you need the upside depends on what else you're you're, you're playing but i think in general you want to get the guys like with with that strike and upside and i mentioned this a couple of days ago and i said listen this has become it's not a leak of mine but something i have to keep an eye on is just make sure to all else being equal to take the guys with that upside and uh Gausman certainly seems like one of the one of the upside type guys and i think also I mean, it's not like he has a bad matchup either. You know what yeah. I'm um, so I, I definitely think that Gaussman's certainly near the top of the list, if not at the top. I'm not even sure how to separate some of these guys. Um, what does what does make them um, Gaussman? I don't want to say break the tie, but what makes gives him a little more oomph is that you can you could play him with, with with the hitters too. You know, like you could uh, you could you could play Toronto hitters also. Now Stroman's not exactly the guy you know always want to you know you want to want to go after, but you know, Toronto's always always good to me you know um i don't have toronto as one of my top stacks but i mean all else being equal i'll throw them in you know especially with some gals so for me i don't like stroman tonight i don't like chicago hitting i do like uh Gaussman and i do like you know secondarily like toronto right and and so so i so here's the here's so i i i first of all do have Gaussman as one of the priority i guess you want to call it six i've got it as five 
Um, but I do have Gaussman as one of those. Uh, and I think, he, I think he's a, he think he's a high level one. The problem is the Cubs have actually been sneaky better offensively and actually been playing pretty good baseball since the all-star break, which is, so you know how that happens. Sometimes you trade away all your players or you get rid of everybody and you're just sort of playing for nothing, but the team sort of gels together. The Cubs have actually been playing well. Uh, Toronto won five, four last night. It felt like they scored zero runs because everybody who scored for them, I didn't have a piece of, and I did have some Toronto pieces. Toronto has been awful offensively, like just completely awful. And they are a weird team because they, they score the way we want them to for DFS. We, they score with home runs. That's what we want. Um, the problem is when you're getting, you know, seven hits and you have no home runs and then you finally get a home run, but it's from the number nine hitter and number eight hitter. It's just frustrating. Um, uh, Stroman is not a guy who gives up a ton of power. And historically, he tends to pitch to a lot of contact and uh, keep the ball on the ground a lot. I could see pieces of Toronto here, but I don't think I'm going to prioritize them as a stack. Of course, if you get past Stroman, you've got a nice bullpen to beat the hell out of. But I uh, I have Gaussman. And if you're going to play some hitters, you'd want to look for the more fly ball types um, from from the from Toronto just to to, to, to go against the, the ground ball pitching of, of Stroman. Or you'd want the stolen base upside a little bit of maybe a Springer. Um, they're they're totally fine. I think they end up on the outside looking in for me tonight as far as priority stacks go. Um, yeah. So what you guys can do if you guys want a little uh, quiz or a little competition, they use, they do this with chess a lot when you chess in chess videos. When you get to a key point in the game, they say, "Okay, pause the video and try to figure out what to do next." Then we'll get into it. I want you guys to think about this. I'm going to think about this myself. So Bobby mentioned that they're, they're, his top group is, is a, a clump of, 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 of five, and I have six. And I'm trying to figure out in my head which, the, which is the guy that drops. So why don't you guys do yourself a favor, pause the video for now, and rank your top five. In other words, like, and where, let's see if your top five would match up with Bobby's top five, because I, I think I know which one's going to drop off. We're, we're going to see. Um, we'll see. We'll see. So we're moving on to – what I call like the terrible city planning uh, game. Um, so, so, so Dodgers at Mets on during to have the Dodgers at Mets on a week where there's the U S open is ridiculous. So stupid. Okay. They're like two miles apart, not to mention they have traffic. It's like you can't, you, it's, 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 it's spectators being divided. You know, it's all bad. I mean, uh, so what in happens, any case, what happens with next with, with Venus's next match when it's, when it crosses over at the same time, Right. I mean, it's, it's, it's just ridiculous. Um, I mean, just, I mean, just Serena, bad, sorry, Serena. bad city plan. Yeah. Um, any case, um, Hey, good, uh, good series. Hey, props to what's his name to Heaney for his last performance. Um, he was, he was mowing them down. They interviewed him after they interviewed him after the game. And he's like, I'm just happy that I could just like pitch and not worry. You know what I mean? I'm just getting out there just doing my thing and just pitching and pitching and pitching. Um, and he's gonna help them, man. He's, he's gonna, yeah. he's, he is gonna help them. Um, no, I'm not gonna get to any of that, any of this today. Um, although, I mean, we'll, we'll shout this out to Grant. If uh, the, the Taiwan Walker fraud narrative, you could always, you could always uh, try to uh, try to dial it up if you got the lefty Dodgers coming in to try to swing against him. I will say this: it's hot. Um, uh, so I don't think I'm gonna do it. Oh, well, maybe I'm, maybe I'm. Gonna, yeah, you know, I have the Dodgers kind of, again, a secondary spend-up type stack. I'll, I'll probably get to a little bit of this. So, for me, yeah. not quite going to do Haney quite yet, um, but I will uh, probably dabble in Dodgers. Okay, I, I like I like that. I like the idea of getting some Dodgers um, uh, against Walker here. It's it, Again, just you you get that type of, 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 of right-hander against the Dodgers, and it's just – it's they just – they can always go off. They're not making a long trip from Miami. They sort of put their – their worst foot forward, no bets. They put Gonsolin on the short term IL because they, he's got a shoulder, so he's got shoulder soreness. They didn't even want to do an MRI. They just wanted to, you know, keep him on the IL. They're, they don't have a whole lot to play for. I do think this series will matter a little bit more to them for whatever that means. And Heaney is a is the ultimate wild card. Again, if you're playing 150, you are playing some Heaney. He fits into the Cole Irvin uh, category. Heaney has ridiculous. We know we know he's got ridiculous range of outcomes. But what I'm thinking, and for this game, for this kind of a slate, is I think that you know, look, if you if you find anything, and I don't think you have to worry too much about chalk, like in a crazy way. But I have no problem if you want to play Pete Alonso as a one-off, 
or basically any of any of these righties, he's going to give up home runs basically every time he starts. He'll give up at least a home run. He just that's just the way he is. He'll also probably he also has the ability to strike out ten. Um, he's not going to pitch crazy deep into the game unless everything's going perfectly. Uh, but I I do think that uh, that the getting some pieces of both of these offenses, well, they don't make sense completely from a stack perspective. I think that you certainly could get some pieces. My favorites at being expensive, unfortunately, but I really like Pete Alonzo tonight. It feels like a great spot for him to potentially go deep. Jeff Marte is a little too expensive for me, as is Lindor. I think I'd rather go with just, just the upside Pete Alonzo potential double home run power. Um, but I but I do like Alonzo and I and I could consider Darren Ruff as well. And for the Dodgers, I think that Joey Gallo, that's a really weird to suggest Joey Gallo back in New York um that's that's pretty that's pretty big um but gallo Betts, and freeman would be my favorite three for for the dodgers i think there is there is this is more just again pieces um i don't think i want to fully stack any of this but i do like some pieces and i want to say by the way there was a couple of other very sharp guys who i like in the industry that's podcast i listened to yesterday they were talking about their lineups and they literally were like not even factoring in stacking and it's one of the first times i've heard that on a major show talking about just, okay, I'm just going to get some pieces here. Now this is a 15 game slate. We don't need to do that, but he was going like two man, two man, two man. Like, you know what I mean? It wasn't like anything just playing for the home run upside. And I, and I, and as much as I'm, I'm more into the five man stacks this time of year, cause somebody's going to just blow up one slate. I, I do think that's a really interesting thing. Um, I'm excited about this next game. So I, I'd love to jump over to the next one whenever you're ready. Yeah. I will say also before everybody goes too crazy on the Dodgers, this is, it, it is, it is tough to get that ball out of that park. Um, but, but 13 mile an hour winds blowing out to left and it's hot together. and it's hot it's hot yeah. see i agree with you but this is this is a this is a, t- a day where maybe you could do it yeah um oh and you could also throw will smith into the mix um all right so uh let's talk about the uh the seattle detroit game uh kirby is another one of my priorities uh i'm assuming he's one of yours as well one of your six yep okay and um, I feel really good about him. I, I I have a very hard time not seeing myself using him multiple times in that. Hey, can you pause this for just a sec? Yep. No Sorry. problem. Hey, I'm, I'm recording. All right. So we're just talking about Seattle, Detroit. I was just saying that I really like, uh, I really like George Kirby here. And I think that he's, you know, he may end up being one of my top guys, maybe my top guy. It's totally, it's definitely in the, in the it, potentially there. I do like the, Seattle offense for what it's worth uh, a lot more than maybe uh, maybe the run the, the odds makers will only have them at a 4.3 uh, Manning has actually been like awesome his last couple times out and if you want to take a wild chance I don't mind you know the guy scored 23 or more in three out of his last four he scored 30 last time against San Francisco which is no easy feat um, I, I think there's some talent there but I think there's a huge range of outcomes and I like the idea of a low-owned Seattle stack. And as I keep mentioning, I did. I did. By the way, one one of the things I did get right is I talked. I talked to Hanniger up a little bit, and you know the guy has been double-digit points more than half of his games. He's hit you know four home runs in his last what ten games. Um, I do like the uh, the Seattle side of this, and you can get some cheap pieces with Santana. Not a great, not not the not a great, but a sort of an underrated hitters park. Better than people think. Again, winds blowing out to left. So I, I can get behind uh, this, the Mariners as a stack today. They're they're so far of all the teams we've talked about. They're my favorite if I had to make a full stack um, because I don't trust Detroit's bullpen. And I think Manning is has got some talent, but has certainly got some leaks in his game. And if you're not going to play Kirby in a lineup, I don't mind if you want to take a shot on one of the minimum cost guys, uh, Castro or Car- probably Cat Carpenter would be my preferred one. But uh, I don't think you need to do that on this slate. So I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna say the Mariners are actually a legitimate chance uh, stack tonight, and I am going to play George Kirby. All right. So I have a couple of things. First of all, regarding Manning, um, one of the things you know people uh, people ask, you know, hey, do you watch the games? Do you pay attention? Or you just like just put your bets in to see what happens or whatever it is. One of I don't watch all that often, but sometimes that I do and. When I watch, say, the Tigers, because let's face it, I mean, we were usually playing pitchers against the Tigers. So so you watch more Tigers than, <laughs> than otherwise you would have. Right. right. And, when I, and when I watch the Tigers, I always get the, um, you know, you get the local, you know, you get the, they're never on national television, right? So so you get the local, you get the local guys, and they're not exactly the greatest announcers in the world, but they, they have some good, at least insight on this, I don't know, a small, not a small market team, but you know what I mean, like a small team, mm-hmm. right? 
And all I'll say is that like Manning during his last performance, I mean, these announcers were, 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 were talking like they've been expecting this the whole year, you know, you know, like uh, they have this guy as, as, as like the greatest thing since sliced bread. And, and, and uh, they've been expecting this for a while. Now, apparently coming from the minors, he was, you know, he had a good strikeout rate in the minors. Then he came out of the majors, couldn't strike anybody out. And the thing about these young guys and you've been saying this for like a while. These young guys just have upside, you know. When they, when they turn the corner, it sometimes takes a while for projection models to catch up, right? Because projection models are are, are you know looking backwards quite a bit. And you, if you make like real changes or you like something kicks in or whatever it is, it's going to take a while before you kind of before projection models kind of catch up. We'll get to what's his name, Brady, like Brady Singer. We'll get to him later too. You know what I mean? Right. Guys like that. They're not going to project all that great, you know, but, but if you get a guy that's on the upswing, just as he's turning the corner, you'll be able to get ahead of the projection models, you know, for a while, you know, for, and, and, and if you believe that, you know, that, that Manning has actually turned the corner or whatever it is, then he's going to be underpriced for a while. He just is. Um, now again, not, not easy against Seattle. And, you know, I've been playing Seattle for, for a while and, like, as you said, since Manning, since Manning, since uh, Hanner came back and you said he's like a great one of every game, every game, I think he's has like 37 home runs in the past week or something like that. He always seems to have a home run. So I don't really want to play Manning, especially on a, on a hundred game slate with a whole bunch of pitchers. But I just want to just kind of point that out. Yeah. Uh, as a matter of fact, I do kind of like Seattle a little bit, just like you mentioned as kind of like not my top three stacks, but I have a whole bunch of kind of, you know, mid, you know, secondary ones. I definitely have them in there. Um, with respect to Kirby, uh, I have him in my top six for whatever reason, I, I, something, something about the play just kind of concerns me given the competition on the slate. So I'll just kind of just, I don't want to make my case, whatever it is. Now, keep in mind, Detroit is, you know, that's, that's what you want. You know, you want, you want a righty against Detroit, right? But, you know, it's not like he pitches 110 pitches a game, right? He's not like got Aaron, he doesn't have like Aaron Nola leash, Right. Um, he doesn't have, you know, I, I don't know. It's just for me. Um, yeah, he could put up there. He could put up 30, right. He's got 27 to 27, but he he would have to do something he hasn't done before. Right. I mean, cause you really want 30 you know, on a slate like this. Yeah. Um, so all I'll just say is that if in fact he becomes the most popular, I don't think he will, you know what I mean? But I'm, I'm just saying that may, I don't know if he's at my favorite of all of these when it comes to kind of getting the win. I guess, you know what I mean? But I just like the guys with like the hundred pitches, you know, um, an 80 and 83 and 85, they're 74. Now remember he was coming back, right? Like you were mentioned from, yeah. uh, from whenever we talked about this, right? Um, so maybe this is a good opportunity to, you know, I guess the weak team to like, let him, you know, let him do his thing, whatever. But um, I don't know. I have him as one of the top five or six, but to me, it's not like as, as much of, of a, of a standout. I'm not so much I would play Detroit yeah. against him, whatever. But but um, so I'm I'm kind of I'm you know I like I like Kirby, I like his spot. Um, it's obviously the best spot I think. But mm -hmm. um, but I don't know. I mean, he's 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 fine. I'm not gonna lock him in or anything. Like that. Also, Detroit has been weirdly feisty. They've been putting up a ton of runs lately. So it just just throwing that out there. But I, I hear what you're saying. I I do I do think that uh, I mean, no matter what, I'm gonna play Kirby because I I I just. I believe in the talent. And I think that this, I mean, you have the highest high strikeout rate against the highest strikeout rate team. Um, and I, I, it's hard for me to avoid that, but I, I do hear you. I think that, that, that Detroit is also, like they said, they've been, they've just been pesky enough and they've, and pesky enough more. They've, they've outscored the blue Jays over the last few weeks. I mean, so that they've actually been a better offense lately, but they do still have the strikeout rate. So yeah. I, I hear, I hear both sides of that one. Uh, this is a weird one for me. Uh, this Atlanta Colorado game. Uh, I am I am definitely have Atlanta as one of the top stacks. You could argue that they're the top stack. I am. It's hard for me with Freed at nine point nine. But if I mean, he just eats up innings. If the strikeout gets gets an extra couple strikeouts on his side, he's going to be in the thirties um, a lot of the time. Here, he I have on the outside looking in right now. Um, he is not one of the the six who I think is the one that you are. I think you're going to have him as one of the six, and I may may change my mind by the end of the day. But as of right now, I'm very high in Atlanta against a guy who may be the worst pitcher in baseball, and um, although somehow has kept the ball on the ground enough to where he doesn't like, you know, other than the the. the I mean, he had, he had he had a negative twenty against Texas last time out, but he at least he didn't give up a home run. It was only one inning that he pitched, but he get, he hit Fitz face like a million batters. Um, 
I, I am I have Atlanta as a definitely a priority stack and and I'm just stuck on Freed. I, I I don't I don't as of right now, I don't think I'm gonna do it, but I have no problem if anybody else wants to do it. Yep, and you are hundred percent right. And you did and I did figure correctly um that, that would be the one from the top from mine, whatever that would drop off of your list because like and like I mentioned, he doesn't he's not the greatest DFS pitcher, right? And we talked about this a lot. I was wondering, I mean, I, he, he reminds me of, what's his name? The other, the, the Houston guy, you know? Um, yeah, Valdez. Um, you know, um, and and the difference, I think Valdez put up like 40 in his last start or something like that. Yeah. I don't remember, but but um, here I do I do have an opinion on this game. Um, first of all, yes, Atlanta's going to show up as, as a really, really good stack, probably the top stack on the board. They're going to be pretty popular as well. It's probably going to be warm I, just because it's Atlanta. It, it is. And, if Acuna play, if Acuna plays, I mean that's, that doesn't make it any easier um, on Arena. Also, um, so the, I have an opinion. I'm, I I don't want to say I'm seven and zero. Oh. That's not just I'm making it up. It certainly feels like it with my actual like baseball like bets for the year, whatever. But I, I looked it up, and Atlanta minus one and a half runs is like minus one fifty five. I mean, I'll just take that free money and just you know what I mean, and just Ooh. just just take my wife to dinner. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, got, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he got he got Max Freed against against Jose Arena, and 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 I got a I got a win by one and a half runs. I'll 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 take a shot. To me, as I've mentioned this before, this certainly feels like a ten nothing game. You know what I mean? Like I don't know if it's actually going to be ten nothing, right. but uh, but I I I this is I, that that's that's what I would recommend this game. Um, uh, and again, Atlanta certainly looks like a tremendous stack, and you know it's a matter of popularity and all that stuff, and. Freed, I, I think I agree. While I do have them rated, him rated as one of the top five or six, probably not going to end up playing him, at least in the big buy-in. Mm -hmm. Um he's get he's gonna get the win, right? You know what I mean? Like, but yeah. you know, you need you, I really do think you need close to 30. And he could he could get there as well, but I always have this this envision, this this idea that Colorado is gonna give up a lot of fantasy points, but whenever somebody actually pitches against them. They don't really give. They don't really show. They don't really get a lot of strikeouts. It seems. Mm -hmm. Um. So and you have Freed. I mean, look. I I really think that he has, he has like sneaky like no hit upside tonight. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. but, but 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 I mean, there, it's not it's not going to be the way it goes. You know, he'll pitch seven innings, probably one run, three hits, six strikeouts, maybe yeah. twenty five fan twenty five fantasy points, maybe. You know what I mean? And that's so just I, not. I don't I think actually, that's enough for ninety nine hundred. I look at 25 the way I think you look at 30. I'm okay with 25. Okay. I just, but, yeah. I, but again, when you have other guys with upside who are cheaper in some cases and then just have, right. but I, but I mean, he should be like, he, again, I reserve my right to change, change my opinion on Freed as, as of right now, he was the one I had to leave out because I've got to make some concessions somewhere. You know what I mean? Right. But I think, and, and again, like you, like, like you said, the Houston pitcher, those are the two guys who I, I just don't know what I want to do with. And as of right now, I'd rather have them on the outside looking in, yeah. um, but I totally understand it. Well, well, you know, what's interesting. I think that probably, and well, you know, you know, I'll, I'll save this for when we, we recap the pitchers later. I was going to say, yeah. I mean, like, what, you got to think about these, like which pitchers have the best blend of that, like win upside or win, you know, safety and strike out upside. You know what I mean? Well, we'll, we'll probably do that when we summarize it a little later. Yep. Sounds good to me. Um, all right. Uh, Minnesota and Boston. Uh, everybody knows I don't, I don't love playing Boston in general on the road uh, for a lot of good reason. And Boston has looked terrible. It is kind of interesting that against Archer and, a, and that in the bullpen that their run total is as low as it is to me. Uh, I feel the same way a little bit about Minnesota. Uh, well, the Minnesota's run total is a little more reasonable to me, but I, 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 I personally, uh, I think this whole game has got some interesting pieces, especially Kepler at 3,100, Gordon, but you have the pinch hit risk. Same with Cave. Um, I, I'm, I, I like I like, I like like pieces in this game, uh, especially for Minnesota. And I'm okay with Boston pieces, especially Devers, even though he's really expensive, and and maybe, maybe Devers and Verdugo. But I, I don't really like – not look at this game going, I really want to stack this. Um, that's just where I'm at. Yeah, I, I, uh, I passed that game. Yeah. Oh, you're just skipping it. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's move over to Houston and Texas and Valdez, who just keeps, he's just really good all the time. <laughs> um, but simple as that. I think that I would go with him over Freed today. Uh, it's close between the two of them. 
And it is, you know, Freed is at least pitching out of division where I, I, I prefer to take guys. We just saw Valdez put up 32 against these guys. He's been really good. Um, he's very consistent. Even when he doesn't like, even when he doesn't have the, the game of his life, he still is always going to put up decent numbers. His strikeout rate's been a little bit higher than Freed's, Freed's has been lately. Um, so I have him a little bit ahead of Freeze, just barely on on that that first tier. And I also am factoring in the fact that I think Freeze gets like 25% ownership and Valdez gets like 10 probably. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's why I have Valdez ahead of Freed because I see them as basically the same pitcher tonight. And I am not going to be playing Houston uh, against Dunning. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I think Jordan Alvarez makes for a great one-off, but I don't have Houston as a priority as of right now. Yeah, I was overhearing people talking about Houston. I, I have no interest in stacking against Dunning. I, 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 I have no interest in that at all. Um, and Valdez, again, if he shows up in a, in a, in a mass build, I'll, I'll flick him in, but I'm not not going out of my way to play him either. I mean, for me, this, 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 this game is kind of a pass too. All right. Um, let's move over to KC and Chicago. Um, I am going to, so I'm going to have a different group of pitchers probably than you think you are on this slate. I don't know about that. I don't know. Maybe not. I, I do really like the idea, uh, like Giolito, you know, he had a, a tough matchup last time out against Baltimore who hasn't been striking out at all against righties. Giolito's strikeout numbers in general have been down, but actually more than being down, he just hasn't worked deep enough into games to really have a monster strikeout performance. His actual strikeouts per inning are pretty good. And KC, we've seen struggle like crazy the second half of the year. So I am very open to Giolito. And the guy who's going to be overlooked today, and I'm not entirely sure why, is Brady Singer, except for that we have all these other guys. Um, I'm okay with both these pitchers tonight, and I don't think I'm going to have much interest in the hitting. Yeah, so for me, I think this is a this is kind of a key game. Um, when I when I first looked at the slate, looked at whatever, I I I said, listen, if, if there's no projections to come out, I know what's going to end up happening. I want to play Singer and Giolito together, and 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 pay up for hitting somewhere and fade all the all the all the big all the bigger guys. Um, that was just my my instinct. Right. Um, and I knew and and listen, I just went on you know ten minute diatribe earlier about about these pitchers, these young pitchers who just the projection models don't catch up to. And I alluded to Brady Singer, and I'm looking at my projection models. They have him rated like going to get like 15 fantasy points or something like that. I'm like, okay, <laughs> like again against the White Sox, against the White Sox righties, who basically just just feed fantasy points <laughs> to 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 right-handed pitchers, right? Yeah. Um, so for me, I don't care what these projections say. I mean, like Singer's got all this kind of upside, and he's feeling it. You know, in case he loves, you know what I mean? Like I think Casey's let's let's go. Let's let's have this guy just keep pitching. Yep. Um, Giolito always has upside. I think he's a little fishier, if you want to know the truth. I mean, I, I've, I've been playing him every, pretty much every start because he always has that ceiling. And right. um, he looked fine against Baltimore. I'm l- lucky to get the win uh, after all that. Um, and I needed it. Uh, thank God he was only whatever price he, he was. Um, I also, by the way, think that both sides of the bat are kind of sneaky in this spot too, you know? Um uh yes singer's been hot and yes the white Sox have struggled whatever but they still have that back class you know what i mean like they still have that 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 ability and but i would only do it if singer started to pick up steam you know what i mean like only if singer started to get like a little bit more popular which i guess he could in some of the buy-ins but 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 i'm not i'm not anticipating that and and any any set of hitters against against the white against uh Giolito are always in play as long as they have some home run power so yeah. i wouldn't do a full five-man stack in, uh, for kansas city but certainly could play some perez um salvador perez certainly could play some uh the, the guy the the, uh, the bobby witt jr yeah um who else is on kansas city Mel- Mel- melendez and, and melendez um so so i have no problem playing some kc guys because because giolito always has home run <laughs> Home runs in that in that arsenal as well. So so I, I don't know. I, I, I think this this, uh, this game can be can be somewhat tricky, and I'm probably going to have all all four prongs of this to some degree. Yeah. So it's an interesting if you look at the history with Giolito versus this team, which is uh, you know 130 at bats, nothing crazy, but 41 strikeouts, 130 at bats. That's a phenomenal strikeout rate. Um, but they've also hit eight home runs off of them in only 130 at bats. That's that's pretty solid. So. Um, you know, Michael Taylor, you could throw into that mix if you wanted to do a little mini stack. 
Um, so I, I, I'm okay. I'm okay with that. I'm a little bit more on the Giolito side tonight, but I certainly wouldn't blame you if you play some Royals. Absolutely. Um, Boston, Minnesota. No, oh, sorry, uh, Pitt, 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 Milwaukee. I missed, I missed, uh, I missed one here. No, we already did Boston, Minnesota. Uh, Pitt, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Pitt, Milwaukee. Um, do we, I think, I think it's a good time to go back to Minnesota again. Uh, Milwaukee. Milwaukee again. I it didn't work out so well last night. I also don't have a problem if you wanted to play some pit bats here. Um, it's going to be basically a bullpen ish game. And I don't think I want to stack them or anything like that, but they are, they are cheap um, in some spots. So I have no problem with Pittsburgh pieces. And I do think Milwaukee is going to end up as a, uh, one of my priority stacks tonight. They're too cheap. They, I know they didn't get there for us last night, but I, I guess they kind of got there in the end, but um, took, took extra innings. I, I do, I do like Milwaukee tonight for what it's worth. And I'm going to be very heavy on them. They're one of my favorite stacks. Yeah, so I have um, Atlanta and and uh, as one of the top uh, spends, whatever, and I have Milwaukee right up there. Um, so I, I agree with that. And I also, under Oakland, which I have as my top value, I have Pitt as my second top value. So I'm right with you on that too. Um, obviously, I have no interest in either of the pitchers. Um, uh, so yeah, I agree. I'm Milwaukee hitting, Pittsburgh hitting as well. And uh, yeah. Yep. Um, all right, so let's move on to uh the Yankees and Angels. Uh, boy, uh, I mean, the Yankees, if this game was in Yankee Stadium like a month ago, this would be like I think this would be like a seven run total in the chalk of the slate, but it's right. in LA, which is but it's 82 degrees in, in Anaheim today, little wind blowing out. Um, I am very okay with the Yankees stack tonight against Myers. Um, there's a, a, you know, on a sicko small slate, I would consider using Myers at 5.2 because it's really cheap for a guy who probably will pitch five innings. Um, and, you know, the Yankees, we know that they've been more the Yankees and by names in the second half of the season than, than by actual talent. You do have a four and a half K prop for Myers. It is an extreme hitters umpire. I'm not going to play tie on, I don't believe, but certainly nothing wrong with playing him against the Angels here. I just personally am not going to do it. Uh, I get frustrated by the strikeout rate. He's on the outside looking in for me, but I, I'm I'm higher probably on, than most on the Yankees tonight. Yeah, so that's the um, that's the other one uh, alongside of Atlanta and Milwaukee. Um, I have the Yankees kind of tied with them as the uh, top stack, um, and I don't not getting any Talion, and I'm not getting any Meyer. So uh, agree again. Yeah. Um... And I get the tie-on's another one I'm I'm reserving my right to to reconsider later on today, but I, right now I'm not going to get any of them. Yeah, back. I don't think I want. I don't know. I don't, I don't think I want to do that. Yeah, the Angels actually have been a little have been better too since obviously. Well, no, no shocker since Trout's been back and they're hitting Otani again. Um, okay, Philadelphia, Arizona. Um, I I always like Aaron Nola. I'm always going to be over the field on Aaron Nola. I know he he's frustrating. So he doesn't get there. I mean, he did just put up 47 his last time out. And that's, a. I mean, honestly, that's like a, like almost a, like a concern of mine because, uh, you know, except for that, he didn't, it's not like an unusual number. It's not an, like, unusual for him to throw a hundred pitches, which is all he threw in that complete game, uh, that complete game shutout against uh, Cincinnati. Uh, it is Cincinnati. It's very different. Arizona has been a little better offensively than probably people think, but I still have Ty. I still have Nola very high. I don't think I'm going to get to Zach Gallon against Philly um, and the roof will be closed for what it's worth. So I'm not playing the hitting in this game, but I do like Nola a lot. Yeah, I don't. Um, I, I find it difficult to believe um, there's going to be too many double negatives here, but but I, I think that Nola's just got to be the best play. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't have him rated that way. I have him rated like six or something like that. I, I, I just, literally don't get it like i mean you, you talk about the combination of win upside with um with uh with strike with 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 ceiling i i i like nola a lot i mean the only thing it's it's in a weird way that's 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 curbing my enthusiasm for this sort of so to speak is is that um is that gallon's pretty good on the other side you know so may, maybe the the win equity quite isn't isn't quite as much of a lock as some of these others but who the hell is Arizona? You know, I don't the roof. I don't care where the roof is. You know what I mean? Like no, the only thing about Nola is he does. You know, I've seen him give up home runs. I suppose, 
but I don't know. I mean, as long as I can find a way to to, to play him, I I kind of I kind of want to do that. Um, I would. Uh, but then again, I mean, like, is he that much of a better play than Kirby? I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, so, so this is where we're gonna have to separate these guys at the end. But but I definitely like Nola. He, my projections don't have him as a top play, but instinctively, I think that that's what you're supposed to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and I do have the Phillies as kind of a weird, like secondary stack or something. Like, no one's gonna play them. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. maybe that maybe that's something. Mm-hmm. And I'm really not getting to Gallon. I thought I would. Um, he usually projects pretty decently, but I guess Phillies are kind of a tough tougher spot. So yeah, he, uh, me, Nola and, and some Phillies. Yeah, they priced up Gallon a little bit. Um, he's got, he's sort of, you know, he was down in the seven K's not like what two starts ago. Um, he's been awesome lately and Philly is a tough, tougher matchup for him. You do have an extreme pitchers umpire in this game. Um, but, uh, Dan, Dan Merzel, but I, I, I have more on the NOLA side. If I'm just, it's just hard at 600 or whatever, 900 difference. I just think I'd rather get the money for NOLA, but I, I certainly understand the Gaussman play. If for those of you who want to make it, I'm totally okay with that. You mean gallon? The gallon play, excuse me. Um, and then we get into the last one of the guys who I'm actually using. It doesn't feel great to me. Um, it's just because it's always hard on a big slate to, to, to just, you know, ri- we're riding with Snell. Um, we know there's a wide range of outcomes here. You do have an extreme pitchers umpire, which gives him a little bit of a boost. Uh, love the strikeout upside. Uh, so I am going to be playing some Blake Snell. I, I can't get to the, 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 I just keep waiting for the strikeouts with Logan Webb and it just doesn't happen. Um, I, I don't know. He's better in real life than he is for fantasy, but I am high on, on Blake Snell. He is the fifth, the fifth of my, my main guys that I'm using. And I am not, I'm not going to be hitting, taking the hitting in this game in San Francisco. Okay. So first of all, um, so here's the, the Logan Webb thing. So so again, two games ago, as you may recall, I needed him to just basically be normal to win like the whole afternoon slate. You got you know? yeah. And he got negative 2.7. And he was dead from the first inning. You could just tell. I mean, he was walk, he walked somebody and then and then he like gave up a hit to like the number eight. I mean, like it was just bad from the beginning, and I just knew it. You know what I mean? I was waiting for him to just get taken out, and and it's what happened. And then the next game, he was against Detroit. Remember, we talk about this, right? Nut matchup, Detroit versus righties. And I'm like, I'm not playing him. There's no way you're making me play him. Maybe because I'm hurt. He hurt my, you know, hurt me last time, not doing it. And then after for three innings, he was basically perfect. He threw out like five strikeouts, three innings, so he didn't give up anything. I'm like, you got to be kidding me, right? I'm like, that's why I got to pay attention to more to match up these pitchers because whatever. And then he didn't get another guy out. <laughs> yep. Then he literally didn't get another guy out. He was chased by the Tigers. Um, so um, I'm out. <laughs> I'm Logan Webb. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I think, listen, this is what happens. I mean, you use up all your career career beating the Dodgers a couple of times last season, you know, at the yeah. end of the season, right? Um, so I'm out on him. Uh, Snell is obviously one of the guys that's going to, you know, it's going to be in my top, top group. I'm sure that San Francisco is going to just 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 throw 800 right 800 righties at them, you know, if they have them, or they'll pull them up, and then it's like going to be platoon central once these guys, you know what I mean? Like uh, once they can maybe get snow out of the game, and maybe that's what they'll end up doing is just have guys like take pitches and things like that. Um, I so I I do think it's kind of a tricky matchup for for snow in that in that regard. I don't know why I feel this. I feel it's like these San Francisco teams and like the, the, the who else is like that? Like Tampa and the Brewers. They have these all these weird tricks to like get around these matchups and stuff like that. So I'm a little concerned about 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 uh, about playing Snell. But you know, but if he's if he's on, he's just he's just gonna be he's just gonna be in good shape. Um, mm. So I, I'll watch the lineups. But would you be afraid if they threw out like somehow like seven righties, like one through seven, um, right against him? I mean, I don't know if San Francisco could even do that, but um look all these pitchers have some has some fleas you know what i mean like it's not like anybody's like incredible like is, is 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 the lock of the of the group so i have snow up there i don't know exactly which is gonna be my favorite though yeah i think my favorite uh our three are are uh kirby uh let me see i actually gotta be gaussman right no uh kirby gaussman and uh nola are my yeah. top three right now um but they're followed very closely by Snell and Giolito. 
And then the guys I'm considering are the Valdez singer, uh, Freed and Tyon. But I, I, probably I think, you know what I think we're supposed to do? I think we're supposed to play singer instead of Giolito. You know, I, I think it's possible that Giolito just stinks. You know, I don't know. No, he doesn't stink. I think it's possible. We've seen this before with him. He's just really, really gets in these weird streaks. Um, but I hear what you're saying. And, and, and maybe you're right. Maybe that's a good way to go. And you're getting really low ownership on Singer, um, which is weird. I'm coming off of a massive chalk performance against the White the, now against the White Sox. And I don't know. Um, hey, we, 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 we've, we've taken shots with worse, with worse pitches against White Sox writings. I mean, absolutely. That's fair. Fair enough. Um, I do have my priority stacks as Atlanta, Milwaukee, and the Yankees. Same thing. Yep, same thing. Same and I'm thing. open to Seattle. I like the pieces from the Dodgers-Mets game. And then, as you mentioned, Pittsburgh and Oakland. For what it's worth in the Oakland game in Washington, there is weather concerns, which we all know in Washington, especially for two teams yep. that don't have anything to play for. It's a little yep. bit more dangerous. So if it's more iffy, don't expect necessarily the two hours and wait or whatever they did last night in Cincinnati because Philly still has something to play for. We've seen Washington – cancel much much bigger games than this and with much less weather with literally with much less weather right so. roth has it perfectly green and they cancel the game for weather when the right game never when it never rains an inch and at all um they and they end up canceling it's just weird but um and 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 and, and uh yeah anyway for what it's worth uh in the short in a short time against with with snell snell has dominated these giants um completely just for what it's worth I'm just throwing so out. so for so for me, I have I have uh, Atlanta Yankees, Milwaukee is the top rated. Um, I think they're all going to get owned owned though to some degree. Um, and as value stats, I mentioned uh, Oakland, Pitt, and KC. Um, and then, but I do have like a bunch of teams beneath these. Um, Dodgers, I think the Dodgers could going back to that could be a could mm-hmm. be kind of a fun one. Um, Seattle maybe I, I mentioned Toronto. Uh, Boston, Philly, even Angels, White Sox. There, there, so there are teams tonight, but I, I agree with your top ones. Uh, Braves, Yankees, Milwaukee. And then to re- recap, Oakland, Pittsburgh, and KC, I think are decent value pieces, especially if you want to do something like play Nola and Snell or something like that mm-hmm. um, and, and need to save the money. But I'm, I'm looking at these pitchers. Maybe, maybe, you're, maybe you're right now that I think about this, that when you combine the, the safety with the ceiling – Maybe, maybe it is the Kirby. You know what I mean? Um, he's only 8,500, even if he only pitches 85 pitches, you know, or 90 pitches, he could still get that 25. Because when, remember, maybe I was too being too greedy, like demanding 30, right? Like, if, right. If you're saying that we need to get to 25, he can get there against Detroit, you know what I mean, in 85 pitches. Mm-hmm. Um, Noah's gonna, I think, no, I think Noah's, I don't know, he seems so. I don't want to say safe, but I mean, unless Arizona's gotten like Luis Gonzalez, I mean, well, they got like a lot of guys back that haven't been there in a while. Um, I have no problem with that. I think Giolito, I, I do think Giolito's fishy. Um, I, I like Gaussman. I have my concerns about Snell that I mentioned. So maybe just kind of talking it through, it would be Nola, Gaussman, and um, maybe Kirby. But Nola Gaussman and maybe Kirby would be my would be my top three. That's what I've got as well for right now. Um, but again, definitely subject to change. And uh, for what it's worth on FanDuel, I really think it's basically the same guys. I would give Freed a little bit more of a boost because well, of- on FanDuel you could take the free money with Valdez, right? I mean, he's it's a quality start every game. <laughs> yeah, but uh, but on top of it, Freed Freed does as well, and he's got a matchup where he's almost definitely well it's hard to say almost definitely but very 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 likely getting the win um he's getting the Colorado win. he's getting so the I actually think Freed gets a bigger boost over there where those that extra 10 points will matter will matter where they won't matter nearly keep, as keep, keep something in mind for him not to get the win remember he's got to first of all give up runs to Colorado which is I guess is a little that's got a possibility but also arena's got to hold down Atlanta Right. You know what I mean? That's rough. <laughs> it's, it's, and the Colorado bullpen tough. after that. So that's all tough. You it's know? Tough. Um, yeah. I mean, and, and, and uh, it's, it should be an interesting slate because I do think that there's so many, you know, stacks that outside of Atlanta and I guess you could argue for Milwaukee, at, but Atlanta especially stands out. And I think anybody else you play to mix with these guys, you're going to get low ownership on. So I suggest, you know, it's, it's for a big slate. I'm not usually saying, Hey, you have to get weird. You don't, but I, there's just a lot of different pieces that, that could end up in three man stacks. And 
I'll know more after some builds. I will post my builds on, on TrueDFS.com so you know what not to do. No, I'm just kidding. Um, and I'll place my bets. My bets at least have been doing well. That's that's the one thing I've got going for me. I did. Cheats, can I really quickly tell you one quick bet I made that I that I'm very proud of? I got all. I, I had all day. a different buddy, and uh, we 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 bet the Nets at forty to one to win the NBA title. They're now seven to one, and we t- we tripled our money and cashed out and just said forget it. But that I like the bet. Uh, yeah, I think that's pretty strong. You don't ever have to win a bet. You're just betting on the speculation of what's happening. And when you when I realized there was almost no way they were going to be able to trade uh, Durant, I just said okay. Well, they they were the, they were the, they were three to one with a much worse team coming into the year last year and the year before. I think I'll take a shot here that people are going to go all over them if these guys don't get moved. So I was very proud of that one. But my other bets, my daily bets have been doing really well as well. Just. Uh, just, just been tr- struggling with the DFS side. So today we turn it around. You got it. All right. Well, good luck to everybody out there tonight. Uh, we hope to see some screenshots in the Discord. Sheets, good luck, man. And uh, I will be live at six. I don't believe that you will be. No, I will. I will not. The only thing that I might, I might be maybe pop in sort of. I'll probably be on a train. So we'll see. All right. All right. Sounds good. Well, good luck to everybody, and uh, we'll see you at the top of the leaderboards.